Hey everybody, um, I wanted to make a semi-short video um, on request from my friend Nate uh, before I go to AA, so definitely going to make this short because I need to I need to do that. Um, uh, Nate asked me a question, Nate, Nathaniel, I don't know which you, which you prefer, um, asked me how does one go about um, starting, forming, or uh, maintaining, building um, a queer community? Where they are. Honey. Honey. Excuse me. I'm talking. Come on. Come on. Um, definitely my, my first piece of advice is, um... You're gonna be quiet? Be quiet. Uh, my first piece of advice is to move somewhere that is queer friendly. Um, I was living way before I came out. I went to college in, in Western Massachusetts. Um, then I was living with my parents in Maryland for a while. And there was no possibility that I could come out or be myself in that place, in that situation, in that home, in that um, in that county in Maryland. I couldn't be myself. I got called a dyke all the time um, just for like looking masculine in like a female space. Um, a lot of people are really only okay with, hey, are really only okay with super um, homonormative uh, type of gay stuff if they even are okay with that at all. Um, so it was just something I, I didn't care to be around and couldn't be around. So I worked at Applebee's for two years or a year and a half. I saved up about um, $1,500 or two grand or so. And I packed all my shit into two bags and I bought a one-way Greyhound bus ticket to New York City. And I knew a couple people and I just, um, stayed at my partner's place for a couple, like a month. And then I found a place and I found a job. And, you know, three years later, I was bottoming out in New York and then moved to Austin. So yeah, uh, really, really quick and hard. Um, I'm trying to think of when, like, when I started being able to build, like, a queer support network around me, and that wasn't, like, I didn't really have a lot of access to it in school. Like, as I've, as I've mentioned on here before, like, I really came out of a very straight space. Um, I didn't really have a queer identity or history in a female space. Um, so as a straight person, I felt really ostracized from LGBT groups and, um, even like there were there were incidents in college with um with a professor with a department chair um really invalidating my questioning um you know accusing me of being a fence sitter because I'm you know bi bisexual um it was it was really hard and it, it set me back in the closet for a few years um because it's really hard for for trans people to find support within queer communities um because most, most queer people in those communities are cis and um, our needs and social needs don't really intersect at all. Um, and when you're often what I've come into, into contact with, with, um, with gay people my age is kind of like an attitude that, you know, they've been, they've been raised in the it gets better generation. So they don't really understand the kind of fear and paranoia I live with all the time. Um, that kind of brings me into where I started to first build my first queer community, and it came of two ways, um, or three ways, rather. Um, I'm going to first talk about my first AA home group, which was an LGBT home group. Um, I'm just going to let you know it's the Rainbow Room. It's in New York City. Um, if you're in the fellowship, or if you're considering quitting drinking and you're queer, especially if you're transgender, this is a great fucking group. Um, it's at the 46th Street Clubhouse, which is at 46th Street and 8th. It's on the second floor. Um, it's right next to this little French restaurant. It's um, it's an amazing place. Um, that 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 building saved my life um, two years ago. And it was in this, this queer AA group where um, most of them are over 35, 40, even up in their 50s and 60s. And these are people who lived through Stonewall, who lived through watching all their friends die in the 80s. Um, and those were kind of the first times that I had come into contact with, with gay men um, who had been through that kind of stuff. And they were the ones who ended up being the most empathetic to me and really understanding 
Um, because they had seen like visible visible trans people in their communities in New York. Um, at the during Stonewall and stuff like that, so they knew. They had like some familiarity with trans stuff, but even like beyond that, they understood what it's like to watch your community evaporate and to have hate crimes happen and no one do anything. And they understand what it's like to live in fear every day and to not be able to access healthcare and be discriminated against. Like they understand that stuff because they live through it and they're not going to be like, well, it's better now. It gets better. Like gays my own age kind of tend to do. Um, so that was really healing for me being around um, just really, really beautiful, powerful men who had, who had been through, um, they, they were my ancestors and it was, it was a privilege to be in the same room as them and listen to their stories. And so I really recommend that. Also, AA kind of opened me up to the possibility of going and getting IRL support. Um, prior to that, most of my queer networking was done on the internet, which is a great way to start off. Like I definitely started getting into and learning about, um, gender theory that kind of transcended the, um, the typical narrative, sort of like the third gender camp, learning about gender queerness, learning about non-binary genders. I learned all that through Tumblr. Like I had no access to it before. That's when I started meeting queer people who were blogging um, about their identities and talking to people and realizing, holy shit, there's a lot of people who actually have a similar gender to mine. I thought I was all alone. Um, there's other people who were assigned uh, female at birth and live out more, were more male existences and prefer to look more masculine and um, cultivate that and are interested in changing their body. Like, you know, I, I met people like me and, um, and then that extended, because it's really isolating on the internet. It's really isolating to only have contact with people on the internet. Like, I know that it's good and like, I've made a lot of great friends online and like, a lot of my, my queer support network, you know, I, I haven't met a lot of them. Um, some of them, you know, we only really talk to each other online and that's, that's fine. And like a lot of relationships are like that these days. A lot of friendships are formed that way. Um, but it's very important to get that support in your real life. And I did that, um, two ways. Uh, well, I guess AA counts as one, but that also opened me up to, um, going down to Cal and Lord in New York city. And see, I was really spoiled in New York city because there's a lot of queer support, like on there, on the ground, like, you can go to Cal and Lord and go to like transgender support group meetings, like, you know, for X amount of weeks, like you do a workshop and, um, you know, you do just like support groups, like, um, you know, they, uh, or is there just somewhere you can just go to talk and meet people? Like they have like social events, like there's stuff like that. Like, so that was really cool getting to do that. I started meeting, like, you know, I, I, that was the first time I sat in a room. I went to, like, a, a trans masculine spectrum um, workshop series where for, like, six weeks we just sat and, like, talked. And, like, it was kind of like a support group workshop thing. And um, to kind of learn more about trans masculine people. And, like, it was amazing to sit in a room with, like, all these guys and, like, First off, I'm in this room and I'm like, whole like I was. This was before I was on hormones, and there were like two guys in that room where I was like, "What? Like you were the kind of guys I would glare at for my entire commute on the train. Like I will never look like you. I will never look like you. Look, you look more like me than I like. Like I don't look like you, and it's like you're trans. What the fuck? Like and it's just like this. Like whoa. Like I could look like that, and that really solidified my decision to start the physical journey. Cause I'm like, you know, I'm in this room with these guys and they're just talking about their gender and like themselves. And I'm like, holy fuck, like these people are like me, like these, these are men like me. And it was just so amazing, um, to be for the first time around, around other trans men. And, um, I've forged some really great friendships, like straight out of that support group who I still really enjoy speaking to today. And that, that was fucking awesome. Um, so yeah, uh. If you're in, like, you know, addictions, fellowships, find ones that are queer-specific um, and find, like, queer support groups in your area. You can often call psychiatrists who work with queer people. I've found some in Austin. Um, and they sometimes run, like, support groups once a month for queer people and trans people. You can find that kind of stuff. Um, also look on Facebook. I'm currently in a Facebook group called Queer Exchange Austin. I'm also in a trans queer social book, um, trans queer social group. I think a lot of cities have this, um, where you can, like, they'll have socials, they'll have, like, you know, meet at a bar, hang out, whatever, whatever, play some pool, like, or, you know, more sober activities, meetups.com, 
Um, I found a couple groups in Austin that one of them's like um, queer museum trips, like just a bunch of people who are queer and also really like art museums. Like, you know, every, like you exchange numbers every now and then you like, you know, team up and, and go down to the art museum. Um, they also have like, um, yeah, just like different, like, you know, social groups for queer people, um, that are just social things to do with people who happen to be queer. So yeah, check out meetups.com. Trying to think of other things other than the museum group. There wasn't a queer bird watching group. I would have really liked that. But I think most people who bird watch are probably also queer. Um, but uh, FetLife, like, I mean, I hate to throw that one out there because I've had mixed experiences with FetLife. I honestly don't think, I think Tumblr's um, better for fetish networking. But I think there is a growing queer presence on, on FetLife. Um, and there's munches where you can, like, um, for those who don't know, in the kink community, munches are non-sexual um, kink meetups where you kind of just meet and greet and have coffee with people. But some of them are queer-specific and trans-specific. So, but, like, with anything, I really, I've had, like, I've had, I've said I've had mixed experiences with the kink community. I could go on about that forever. Um, but, yeah, that's always a possibility. Um, I think I think the biggest changes in how I started to build a support system was simply by coming out and being myself. Like I'm gonna say right now, the more you come out, the more honest you are with yourself, the more the more um, stubborn you are with with how people are able to refer to you and who you, how you want to be seen in the world. You're gonna lose some friends. Um, friends. Um, that that's how I started to really understand who my support network is because I lost a lot of people and I still do lose lose friends, um, a couple friends a year. Um, and it sucks. Like it fucking sucks. Uh, I'm trying to think of like some of the, the first instances. Um, oh, I, it's, this is like, I'm, I'm from New England and this was during the whole, like, uh, the Boston bombing. And, um, I mentioned something so I was really annoyed how people were saying like, who cares about Boston? I'm like, you know, I have family there. Like, shut the fuck up. Like I have friends there. Like that's a lot of my, my friend network is there, not my family, um, but my friend network is there. And uh, I don't know, I just kind of got in, uh, into it with somebody on Facebook, story of my life, but he started flaming me using my first name and the wrong pronouns. And this was like after I had like come out on Facebook, which is a big step. Um, cause I was like in this internet space where I was out on Tumblr, but not out on Facebook, but some of my family knew, but other people didn't. And I had to like keep all the lies straight. And it was just like, Ugh. and that's why trans people are crazy sometimes. It's cause you have to like compartmentalize like your whole fucking personality constantly. Um, but yeah, this part, and I was like, Hey, if you're gonna fucking flame me publicly on my Facebook in front of all my friends, can you use, use, can you at least use like the name I use in real life? And he messaged me and was like, can I still refer to you as X name? Because that's who I knew you as. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You knew me when I was drunk. Every day I was drunk and I was living a lie. So no, like you don't, you don't get to decide how I want to be referred to. Like, and so it's been things like that. It's been things like my ex taking me coming out really hard, taking it really personally, screaming at me on the phone you know, you'll never be a fucking man, like, da 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 Like, that was really painful, and I, I didn't see... I didn't know he was a bigot. Like, I had no idea. And this all came out of, like, one night that my roommate was um, DJing at a gay bar. And I was like, oh, you want to go? Like, my roommate's DJing a set. She's really fun. Just dance, whatever, whatever. And he was like, you know, do I have to be gay to go? And he was, like, being all weird and, like... You don't know what happens to me in those places. And I'm like, really? Like, I was raised female. You're not going to impress me with your one story about how your straight ass was, like, harassed at a gay bar. That's what happens to me literally every time I go out as a girl. Like, are you fucking serious? You know, so it was just, like, a whole bubbling of things that all of a sudden I realized, oh, my God, you're a bigot. I have no idea who you are. And that's just kind of been, like, the story of my life since I came out is, like, all of a sudden, like, you know, I... And a lot of times it's over my tone, which is weird, because, um, like, I, I kind of, my Facebook's private. It's very private. I have a Facebook that, um, that it's like a page that goes along with this blog where I tend to be more posy and censor myself. But my Facebook is my private place to express my frustrations, um, like everybody uses their Facebook for. And people will try to get on me, like, I don't really approve of your tone. You're not being helpful. When it's like, my Facebook doesn't exist to educate people. It's my personal Facebook. 
if you want to be educated, go visit my blog, like, where I censor myself, um, and actually, you know, think before I speak, <laughs> like, um, whereas this is like, ah, someone asked me if I had surgery the other day, Ugh. like, and it's like, to, to make that about you and about how, like, you feel attacked, like, I, I don't want that in my life, I don't, I don't have the patience for that, um, I've lived with enough criticism in my life. I've been surrounded by criticism of who I am and like value being attached to who I am my whole fucking life. And like, there's no room for it anymore. Um, I'm not asking for everybody to agree with me, but I'm asking for people to be supportive and like have the basic understanding that like, you don't get to tell me how to express myself around things that like will never affect you when I'm not trying to be productive, when I'm trying to vent rather than, like, I don't know, that's a whole other thing. Um, but yeah, definitely coming out starts a natural progression where you just fucking lose half your friends, like, and you lose, like, your entire family. Like, that's, well, not your entire family, but that that's what happens is you just, like, the numbers of people that are in your fucking corner just dwindle, dwindle, dwindle. So coming out is a really great organic way um, to build a queer support system. <laughs> Um, but also I think, um, another more positive, really important way to do it is just by putting your foot down. Like I, you know, I took control of something in a big way when I was living in New York, I was living with somebody very transphobic and, um, she would ask me really invasive stuff. She just didn't really get it. Um, I was like kind of, uh, physically harassed by her, her boyfriend a couple times um, and then there's another incidence where, like, her and her other, bo like, a different boyfriend were, like, talking about my, like, gender and physical journey in the shower together while I was in the other room with an earshot, and I'm just like, I, I can hear you, like, I can hear you, I'm in the other room, like, <laughs> like, so it's just living with stuff like that, I was just like, I can't, I can't live like this anymore, I kicked her out, um, I completely, I was just like, you didn't pay you and get the fuck out of my house. Um, I, I should have had these other two people leave, but that was like a whole other thing. But I, I went on Austin Craigslist, I mean, uh, on New York Craigslist and I said, you know, looking to fill this place, queer friendly only, queer people only. Like, I don't want to live with straight people anymore. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Like, and that's when my life changed. That's when all of a sudden I started, like, the people that filled my house, it was fucking amazing. I was living with this really, like, awesome, his name's Pro. really, really great. Um, shout out, his DJ work is amazing. Look him up, Bpro. Um, but he, uh, he's, a, he's a DJ and just, like, you know, and then downstairs I was living with a, a fashion designer who's trans feminine. And, like, so it was, like, the trans people downstairs and then, like, this like revolving door of really vibrant queer like musicians and like performance artists and drag queens that were just like all friends with B Pro and I started meeting all these people and going out to these like events and like so they started coming into my own and like meeting other queer people and I don't know it's just like going out to gay bars like things I really missed out on because I didn't have like not only like, a, a, a guy coming of age, but I didn't have a coming of age as a gay guy. Um, so that was just really awesome. But I, I think there's a really great, there's a lot of great ways to really uh, build a queer support system around you, and it's it's very important. Like, you need to have people around you, like, at least a couple people in your life who get it, because, like, in, in my life, I don't know a lot of cis people. I mean, I don't know a lot of trans people um, in my, like, everyday life. Um, and I work with 100% cis people, and, you know, my boyfriend's cis, so it's like, I need a couple people who at least get it, or, like, I can vent to, so, like, <laughs> um, when I, like, I'm just kind of frustrated with work, I'm just, like, you know, listening to everybody talk about gender and the way that it occurs to them, and just having to keep my mouth shut, because I just don't feel like having that conversation with people all the time, um, it just gets kind of lonely, so it's nice to at least have, like, you know, one friend who I can call and, and talk to, and I don't know, it keeps you feeling less lonely, um, but I, th I think just simply being yourself and being firm about how um, you want to be treated and how you deserve to be treated um, 
and what you what you want from the people around you and that's that's up to everybody like there's certain things i'm okay with certain things i'm not i'm fine with pronoun slip ups as long as i know the person respects me like one of my friends for whatever reason he like slips up all the time and it's like sometimes people who know me better tend to slip up more because they see me being more gender comfortable and see me being like they see me on femi days and like they kind of see me being more like um androgynous um because they know me better they don't know like kind of the the masculine front I have when I'm not in a gender comfortable situation. Um, so yeah, like they'll slip up, but like, I don't really care. Like, cause they're always good at being like, Oh shit, sorry. And then like moving on and not having it be this whole thing. Uh, so I think, I think just being really firm on like what you need out of your friends, what you want out of your friends and cutting people the fuck off when they don't, when they make you feel unsafe. Like you, Become a friend pruner. Like, if people aren't adding to your life and if people are invalidating you and if people, like, act... If they're, like... If their worldview and the things that they're saying and spouting off actively, like, hurts you and actively threatens your sense of self-worth or, like, your value in the world or your identity, fucking... You don't need that person. You don't. Like, I don't care how long you've known them. You don't need that. Like, you don't need people in your life that are going to invalidate you and there's nothing wrong with cutting them out. Like, I feel like so many people feel like they have to please everybody and feel like they have to keep these people in their life that don't really treat them very nicely. Um, and not only don't treat them nicely, but don't, because like, I know that I kind of like, I cannot, I, I'm like not a nice person sometimes, but like, I can take criticism. Like I can like, I've learned, I'm learning and I've learned to a certain extent to like step back and not take shit so personally and kind of like, I don't know, I'm, I'm rambling at this point, but yes, um, seek support in real life, be firm with the people you keep in your life, um, don't apologize for cutting people out who are hurting you, and um, yeah, sur surround yourself with vibrant queer people and like people who are beautiful and free and just seek them out, privilege them, keep them, I don't know. I wish everybody the best of luck in building their own queer communities. It is absolutely possible and it's totally possible to have like a wonderful, wonderful life around very vibrant and very supportive people. So have a great week.